So hi, Microbe Hunter here again. And uh, today, the question today is actually quite long. Um, so there are so many different parts uh, to this question. It all relates to, um, yeah, uh, adapting a, a camera to a microscope. Um, so that I decided not to read out the question to you because I think it might actually cause more confusion than necessary. But simply to provide, a, yeah, a more or less well-rounded answer and to simply explain to you all of those parts. Um, that are in the question independent of actually reading out the question i mean here it is uh, it's it's pretty pretty lengthy so basically the question uh, the viewer um, asked if oh, it doesn't stay so basically the viewer um, of my video um, wrote me and uh, he wanted to know um, whether um, yeah on the microscope adapters that you have uh, here there's also an adapter for a dslr camera and here this one is a, a camera microscope camera there are also reduction optics here right i've got actually another one over here as well and uh, those uh, reduction optics uh, they uh, basically uh, come in different magnifications so in most cases it's less than one magnification so 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.65 and the question is now is um, for my camera, um, what is the correct uh, magnification now um, of uh, the optics here? And, and why are there even different uh, types of magnifications for the um, adapter optics? So this was kind of the question and um, this is basically something that I would like uh, to explain to you um, in a more fundamental way. And we're going to start at the very basics now. There are actually two things that I want a camera system from a microscope to fulfill. The first thing is, is for me, non-negotiable. It's really important. And the second thing we can talk about, we can have a discussion. The non-negotiable aspect is, is I want that when I see an image clear and in focus through the eyepieces, I want that the image is also in focus in the camera. And I'm not talking about small differences here that can be adjusted by adjusting, um, by moving the camera in and out a little bit in some Photo tubes are extensible as well. Now I'm really talking about is it really necessary to really rotate the coarse focus knob um, to move the image out onto the sensor? Well, then that's bad. Okay, um, I can basically by defocusing I can get uh, pretty much um, any image um, into the camera, but I do not want that this um, yeah that it's not par focal. The reason is is because uh, that uh, over here if I just detach this here and just show it to you I have to maybe move this a little bit more into the center here. What happens is is uh, the following um, in the photo tube um, the image uh, the objectives they project an image uh, around one centimeter down into the photo tube. And uh, when, I have a when I have a camera up here and the sensor is up here, I have to move uh, the image out and I can only do that by turning uh, the coarse focus knob, lowering the stage and then I will move the image out. And that's something I do not want to do. For me this is not negotiable because I really lose image quality this way because the objective um, and the specimen are now further away from each other um, and uh, then the objectives do not operate at their designed distance and you also lose resolution this way. So. Somehow we have to make sure with or without intermediate optics to, so that the image here and image in the camera are both in focus. There is one workaround and this one workaround is as well, is there not somehow a possibility to insert the camera here so that it actually the camera itself goes down into the tube? Well, in some cases I can uh, basically shorten the tube because the microscope allows me to do that. Here I cannot cut it off, you know, I don't want to do that. Yeah? So there are some uh, microscope cameras that are actually that small that can be inserted into the tube and then it's also going to be fine. So this is uh, for me the non-negotiable part. And the second thing that uh, I want is, is I want to be able that the camera captures as large of a field of view as possible without causing vignetting or a black a black edges so this means that and that's a fundamental problem with microscopes is, is that uh, the microscopes they give us an image that is round um, and a camera has an image that is square and what i want is, is i want that this square no not square the rectangle rather the rectangle fits into this round uh, overall field of view in such a way that the rectangle is not too small otherwise i get a lot of empty magnification and uh, I'm kind of uh, wasting resolution this way as well. Um, and I don't want it to be big, too big either, because then I'm getting those uh, black corners that I don't want. 
Okay, so the optics that are attached here, and this is kind of answers already a central question, um, the magnification of the optics that we have here must be able to resize the image in such a way that it fits on the sensor of the camera efficiently. It shouldn't be too big and it shouldn't be too small. So the magnification of the optics that we have here must be adjusted according to the sensor size of the camera and there are certain recommendations. Okay, if it is too large, it's not good. If it's too small, it's also not good. Of course, give and take a little bit. Okay, so this is essentially one thing. And the second thing that the optics does by inserting it in here, the optics will pick up the image there where it is projected from the objective. So the optics here, they actually fulfill both cri criteria. They make sure that it is par focal, it's in focus in both cases, and also it resizes the image in such a way that it fits um, on, on fully on the sensor, okay, without wasting uh, uh, um, any pixels and without magnifying it too much. So this is basically, uh, yeah, the thing. And uh, which uh, magnification should you choose? Depends on the camera. So what we have now is the following. We have now digital cameras. Um, that are quite large and some of those cameras uh, they have a sensor which is significantly larger than the width of the tube up here and in this case the optics what they have to do is, is they have to make sure that the light beam that goes out actually is spread apart so that it actually covers the whole sensor otherwise you're seeing it in a circle okay um, so this means that if you are using uh, cameras like uh, for example single lens, lens reflex cameras either in APS-C size or full format both of them are larger generally than the tube of the microscope here and you need to use optics that have a magnification value of greater than one. So for example, this one over here, it says here two times, okay? This one is magnifying two times and it is designed to put a, yeah, a, a camera, um, a DSLR camera on here, okay? Now, those others here, if you look carefully here um, and if you take it off, okay, I'm gonna do this now, then you're able to see that the sensor in here is, is actually significantly smaller than the diameter here, okay? Um, so um, I want to make sure that the light rays or the image that is here is actually compressed together a little bit to fit more of the image on the sensor. And uh, of course, uh, if I just uh, connect it here directly out here, then we have the problem, as I mentioned already before, it's gonna be out of focus. I have to refocus it to move the image directly on the sensor. Okay, so this is essentially the uh, the the task, the two tasks of the uh, yeah of the uh, reduction uh, optics. Now, what I could theoretically do, and um, some microscopes do allow for that, is I'm, I want to avoid the use of those intermediate optics because uh, they uh, introduce um, extra aberrations again, they reduce contrast and so on. There can be problems with that. So um, it would be also kind of nice to have some kind of a microscope tube here that allows me to directly connect the camera. This is a so-called a C mount directly over a C mount directly without any intermediate optics to the tube of the microscope. This would of course be nice. Um, it's possible. Um, you have to look at your microscope model whether this is indeed uh, supported. However, generally um, the sensor is still significantly smaller than the diameter here. Okay, so we're still actually not uh, being, we're still getting a, an additional magnification that we don't want because I want to have a large field of view. Okay, so this is uh, simply um, um, something where I simply have to tell you that uh, these are all of the things that you have to consider. Um, one part of the question was also about the distance. Does the distance actually matter here? And I'm saying, well, actually, um, if it's already designed in such a way that it fits in here, then the distance actually is already correct. And the only small distance that you can change is simply to make fine focus adjustments. But overall, um, it's not, uh, yeah, it, it shouldn't be a large effect. So um, in short and in summary, um, what you have to do is, is, if you want to connect a digital camera to uh, um, a microscope, you need to get yourself a DSLR camera adapter that has uh, intermediate optics that are designed for a DSLR or at least or mirrorless uh, sensor size, um, usually full format or APS-C. And uh, in my case here, uh, the two times one actually works uh, also for full format cameras. I tested this out. I tested this out with my old analog camera and I was still able to get uh, a wide field of view. And last but not least, also important here, and this has to do again something with distance a little bit. This here is a so-called a 2T2 adapter ring. And this is camera specific. So this one is uh, yeah, general, yeah. And you have to get a T2 adapter ring for your camera. 
This one is for Canon EOS, uh, Nikon is also very common. However, there are now some modern mirrorless cameras where um, the T2 adapter ring does not look like this, but is actually quite thick. Now, why is that? The reason is that modern mirrorless cameras, they have the sensor much more further forward in the camera and you need a thicker T2 adapter ring to again adjust the distance. What I want to say with that is generally you don't have to worry about um, the distance because if you use the correct components, they are designed in such a way that you already have the correct distance. So in other words, the fact that the sensor is so much more forward in the camera is compensated by a thicker T2 adapter ring. Um, when you buy yourself a, a camera, a mirrorless or, or a DSLR camera, just make sure that, uh, if, and if you want to use it for microscopes, just make sure that you also have a, a an adapter solution because um, what I've uh, with my research um, online, um, not for all cameras it's easy to obtain a T2 um, adapter ring. Okay, for Canon DSLRs and Nikon DSLRs they're quite common, but for others it might be a little bit more rare. And with the modern mirrorless cameras, I don't know if there's a, such a big market there yet um, for uh, T2 adapter rings. Uh, I would encourage you to do your own research and to find out. Okay, so yeah, uh, what do we have over here as well? Uh, something that you've also seen before. Before. This is this is uh, the yeah the original tube uh, that comes in here. Um, this one has again a slightly different system. Well, not that different. It also has intermediate optics. Yeah. So here we also have it's called a projection eyepiece and has a magnification of, of 2.5 times. Okay. Um, again, with the same purpose, um, it picks up the image there where it is formed, and it makes sure that it's, the image is resized in such a way that it fits nicely on the camera sensor. And this one over here, the 2.5 time, times, actually is made for full format. But interestingly, I tried this out, gives me um, a, a lower um, yeah, a, a field of view than if I use uh, this one here. Um, yeah, so give and take. Um, so what I recommend is um, the following. Um, because those uh, general purpose adapters, they might not be the greatest, okay? Um, I've seen, especially this one was extremely cheap uh, um, and uh, it does introduce some aberrations, but it's good enough. And concerning, uh, considering the fact that the price is relatively low and that you can actually then have a very simple solution of actually connecting a DSLR to a camera, to a microscope, um, I actually would say, um, don't uh, overthink the whole thing too much but uh, I don't know, get yourself one of those general purpose adapters and try it out um, if you're satisfied or not. So last but not least, um, what is there is there not some kind of the, the what, would, what, what would be the theoretically the best solution, ideally the best solution. Ideally the best solution would be is that I could use a, a camera, a DSLR camera, connect it directly up here without any intermediate optics that might introduce additional aberrations. It would be kind of cool if I could just use the optics of the microscope to directly project an image into the sensor of my camera, a DSLR or mirrorless camera, uh, without any intermediate optics. Um, it picks up yeah, the image there where it should be, um, no refocusing necessary, and the maximum field of view. Is this possible? Yes, it is and this is getting expensive. Okay, you have to talk to one of those big microscope manufacturers because what they have is they have their own camera solutions and they have so-called infinity infinity corrected optics that are actually um, projecting the image already there where it should be without any intermediate optics um, and the width of the tube is also wide enough to actually accommodate larger sensor sizes. But even those microscopes, um, um, you need intermediate optics if you want to use full format, okay, so because it's not that big again, okay. So you, you see, um, yeah, yeah. trade-offs everywhere, uh, but uh, that would be of course uh, the ideal solution. Now, if your microscope um, somehow has uh, an extensible or removable tube here, what you might want to try experimentally is, is, is to try to connect it, it directly over the C mounts to directly project it there. And, and if this does not work, then uh, yeah, get yourself a, a camera with uh, intermediate optics. And when you buy them with the camera together, then generally they are already in the correct uh, magnification that it um, kind of agrees with or is, is corresponds to the size of the sensor as well okay yeah um, so this is, is, is again yeah uh, I think uh, everything that I, I want to say for right now um, the problem is is that there are so many different uh, variables and, and, and factors in, involved here and to a certain extent a little bit of trial and error might be necessary um, if you want to have um, yeah, an out-of-the-box solution so to say where everything is perfect you know with the optics working together together perfectly with the objectives and everything then you have to go to a high-end manufacturer 
and they will provide you with uh, a complete imaging solution. Um, but uh, I think that maybe for many amateurs, this might be a little bit uh, yeah, um, over the top, uh, also because the prices and the cost is, is quite high. Okay, I think I'm just gonna call it quits for the day again. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.